Hi there guys. Okay, today we're going to be working on a HP Laptop 15-BS0 dot dot dot. Um, we're going to be upgrading the Wi-Fi network card and we're actually going to, I'm going to show you how to upgrade the RAM in this in this laptop. I had this, I got this laptop about six months ago and I love it to death. <clears throat> However, uh, it only has a 2.4 gigahertz um, Wi-Fi card, and if you're if you found this video, then that's probably the same thing you've just realized and uh, looking to upgrade it. So I'll, I'll be honest with you, I've checked it, checked the uh, test speeds on this and uh, the speed test on this. It it it's not a bad card for two, just a single channel um, single channel card. Uh, I was able to get around 50 this morning. I just checked it before we started this video, and I'm only getting about 35 uh, megabytes per second. But for a, for a, a stock single-band card, that's not too bad of a speed. And also, just to let you know, I'm on Spectrum's um, uh, 200 megabytes. and But at the router, directly from the router, I'm only getting 115, so it may be... Uh, time to upgrade my router, which that'll be for another video. Right now, we're working on upgrading this computer, um, and and it really it really pains me because this this is a great computer. It's a great laptop. I highly recommend it. Um, haven't had any problems with it, but I was really surprised that HP with a 2018 computer, brand new computer with a seventh generation i5 core uh, processor in it. Um, They'd go in and skimp on a little uh, Wi-Fi Wi-Fi network card piece. So we're going to get into changing that out, but there's some things we need to do first. First, I'm going to show you what parts we're going to be working with today. This here is the Wi-Fi card that I that I got. It's a uh, Intel uh, wireless network card. Now, something. Now, if you don't get the card that I'm using here, in particular, you get a different card. Make sure that you're getting a uh, M2, or actually just an M2. Make sure you're getting an M2 card. There's other cards out there that uh, that are NVMe. Now, an NVMe card down here. If you look, an NVMe card does not have this second slot right here. It's a solid set of pins all through here and has a single slot. The M2 card has two slots. Um, so that's an easy way to remember that. Also, um, the card that is in there only has one antenna. These are your antenna terminals. So you will need to buy a set of antennas. Um, we'll get into that more, but just want to leave this for a second. So and pause it if you need to copy this down so you can go find it yourself. But I'm not including this stuff in the comments because uh, in doing my research on this, I'm seeing a lot of the comments, um, they leave a link, and those links no longer work. The, you know, the, the, the card has upgraded to a different, different uh, uh, <clears throat> model or uh, it's just no longer available. So this way you've at least got the information on what to look for if this card is not available whenever you view this video. Also, um, so the antennas. Now the uh, card that's in here, the in, in the laptop, it has a single antenna. You're going to need two antennas or the 5 gigahertz channel will not work even once you get everything turned uh, hooked up and um, get the drivers downloaded. So you want to make sure you get a second set or a set of antennas here. Make sure it works with your card too. So this one here just flat out says I'm <clears throat> I've got an 8265 card so I made sure that the antennas that I've got um, are for that card. Also in looking at the antenna lines um, I was seeing a lot of complaints that the antenna wires were not long enough. These I, the reason I went with these particular ones is that because the if you look right here these wires are plenty long because these wires actually have to feed up into the um, screen part of the laptop 
and we'll, you'll see that later. So you want to make sure that these uh, that these are plenty long enough. A lot of them that I was seeing are only four inches, nine inches. These here are plenty long enough to do what we need to do. So pay close attention if you get a different set of, of uh, antenna wires than this. <clears throat> so there's that. Also, just to show you on the RAM that I got, that I, I already installed it because uh, I wanted to do it all at once, but the, um, the network card actually came from China, and it took about 10 days to get that in. And this one here, Amazon, got to me in just a couple of days. So I couldn't wait and had to get this put in. Um, but we'll, we're going to take that out and show you how to put that in and, and everything when we get to that. But um, uh, with just real quick about um, uh, RAM, um, I've, re I've seen a lot of reviews, a lot of, uh, done a lot of research on this and, um, everything that I've seen, well, not everything, but, but most of what I've seen, most of the people agree, the tech experts agree that whenever you're doing RAM, you want to match your RAM cards. So if you already have a Samsung installed and you're going to put a second card in, put a Samsung card in it, the computer will communicate a lot better as long with the, um, with the cards being of at, at the very least the same brand, um, so this is this here is actually what isn't in, comes installed in the laptop. So that's what I'm going ahead and um, getting a second one of the exact same model so that they communicate best. Now, granted, there are a lot better um, RAM cards out there. They got some fancy looks to them. Um, they look look really pretty, but when it comes down to it's it's all about processing power. And uh, even though this one doesn't look real pretty, nobody's ever going to see it. And uh, it's it's actually a very good stick, especially for seventy five bucks. Next, um, now this is supposed to be a plug and play um, network card. So once we install it and uh, we boot up the computer, it should recognize it and everything, but I'm not taking that chance. Um, I'm going to go ahead and install the drivers for it. If you're not getting this card, if you're getting another card, then go ahead, just, just make sure you're going to the brand name um, website and looking for the, uh, the drivers and whatever downloads are available for that stick. Uh, also with this computer here, this is a 64-bit computer, not a 32-bit. So make sure any t any um, drivers, anything you you uh, download, are for a 64-bit, not a 32-bit. Uh, just real quick, I'm going to go into this to find our drivers. I've already downloaded them, but uh, if it is this card, you're going to go to uh, Intel.com. Click on Support. Go to Download and Drivers. Go to browse for drivers. Do not automatically find because you don't have this installed yet. Go to browse for drivers. Wireless networking. And you're going to go down. I've got Windows 10 on this computer. Now also, another thing with the, uh, with the cards. Um, this internal card has the Bluetooth in it. So uh, in order to, well, I think I already said that, if, if, uh, make sure you're getting a card with Bluetooth. You're going to need separate drivers for the Bluetooth and for the actual um, uh, network card. So here is the wireless uh, Bluetooth for Windows 10 here. And if you scroll down just a little bit, Here's the driver for the uh, uh, for the actual Wi-Fi card for the network card for Windows 10. When you click on that, you will see you have an option for both 32-bit here and for 64-bit. Make sure you're downloading the 64-bit or this will not work. <clears throat> One more thing I'm going to show you while we got it. Uh, Explorer open here. We're going to do a speed test real quick. Um, I just use Speed Test by Net. It's by Ookla. It's real popular. It seems to work really well. So I'm going to do a speed test real quick for before and after.
All right. <clears throat> so you see, since I'm getting 115 directly from my router, that uh, 144 megabytes per second is not that great. It's not bad. I can pretty much watch whatever I want. So like I said, it's not a bad card. <clears throat> The uh, my my daughter's computer who uh, that I just bought is a Dell laptop with very comparable specs as this one here. Um, her stock Wi-Fi card, which is a dual band card, um, was only getting uh, 20, 23, 23 megabytes per second when mine was getting uh, approximately fifty per second uh, in the same location. So, like I said, this is not a bad card. I just want the dual band version so that I can use my uh, 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 Netgear uh, Nighthawk uh, router that I just spent a load of money on. So, let's go ahead and get into it. We're going to close all this out. Next, um, we want to go to the control panel to our device manager. If you're not sure how to get to that, go to your Cortana here, type in control panel. It's going to pop up up here. Click on that. Go down to heart, yeah, hardware and sound. Click on the header. Do not click on view devices and printers. Click on hardware and sound. At devices and printers, go over to device manager and click on that. Now we're going to go down to network. I know for sure. Now we, we need to uh, uninstall our existing uh, Wi-Fi card so that whenever we boot our device back up, it's not going to try to use these um, drivers to control our new network card. So at the very least, we're going to, going to click on, well, first of all, on the Realtek uh, 802.11 BGN PCI adapter. Right click on that, go down to uninstall device, click on that. You want to uninstall. Now we want to double check, make sure it is gone, and it is gone. Now, another thing is we may have to delete these uh, Bluetooth devices once we turn back on. But I'm not going to mess with any of this yet until we go ahead and install. The big thing is is getting rid of the drivers for that that uh, Realtek device. We'll close everything out, and now we're going to shut down our computer. All right, so we've shut down our computer now. Let's start taking it apart. Unplug our cord. Take off my dongle for my mouse. Set that over there. And close it and flip it over. Right. First, I, uh, I apologize for the quality of this video. I wasn't expecting to make this. And uh, so, yeah, I'm stuck using my piece of crap webcam from school here. So. If you got any questions about what we're doing here, if there's something you're missing, I'm just just message me and I'll do what I can to fill in the blanks here. So on this one, unlock over here, push here, and it'll push out the battery. You definitely want to take out the battery for what we're going to be doing here. We're going to take our uh, zero screwdriver here, Phillips head screwdriver. Come on. Uh, screw here on the battery case, here. This one here holds your uh, DVD player in place. We've got one. Let me move that in place here. I'll lay that down. We've got one right here, one on the front, and then one over here. So first we're going to undo this one for the CD DVD player. Keep good track of your screws too because we're going to have different sizes, different colors, and everything to do, to use here. So, with that, with that one out, you just take your DVD player, and it slides right out of there. I'll put that off to the side. Now we're going to go back, take out our other five screws. All 
All right, now we're going to go back to the top here, flip that over, open it up. We're going to use one of our tools here, preferably the plastic one if you can use it. Um, we're going to start up here, and you'll see there's a little groove that goes all the way around the, the, the perimeter of this here, all the way around. So we're going to start up here in one of the corners, doesn't matter left or right, and just start popping that up and just move it down as you can. You'll feel it popping every once in a while. Slide it down, pop one, slide it down to the next, and you'll feel it pop all the way around. Okay. Double check your corner over here, make sure it's popped out. Okay. So we're going to now close the lid, flip it over, and this should lift right out of the case. Now the back here is kind of hinged on those clips, and uh, let's go ahead and pull that apart. So here we go. So we've got, <clears throat> this is our hard drive right here. This is our RAM right here. Now you're gonna if you open yours up, you're gonna see you're gonna see this card that's already installed. This card is not. And for this card here, let me see. So when you open up your computer, this is what you're gonna see right here. So with your your new Emma, your uh, new RAM card, see where the slot is. You'll see where the, the where that pin is right there. Make sure that you line that up right. It will only go one way. Right there. Okay, see? It won't go in that way. Flip it over. All you're going to do is push that in. Kind of wiggle it a little, just a little bit until it goes all the way in. Then push it down, and you're going to hear the clips. That's it. RAM installed. All right, so... Hard drive right here, here's our RAM, um, here's our internal battery for our memory, this is our fan, this is our CPU right here. Um, so you don't want to mess with this or you're going to have, you're going to have to do some other stuff if you go taking this off and messing with it. So this here is our um, Wi-Fi card right here. Now spin this around, get a better look. I hope you guys can see that. I know the quality here sucks. But you'll see, hopefully you can see, right there, that's the antenna wire. This here is the screw that holds that down. So this is our single antenna wire. I'm gonna pop that up. Okay, I'm just gonna pull that off to the side right now, okay. Take your screwdriver, pull that single screw out right there. And that's going to spring up. Make sure you keep track of your screws again. So taking that card out, you're going to see there's our old card right there with the two slots right there in there. Okay. This here is our package of the antennas. This here is our new M2 card, new Wi-Fi card. Okay. Before you do this, just just a word of caution: wash your hands real good. Um, you want to try to keep your hands as free of your natural oils and that with your dealing with these electronics because you get your the oils from your skin on these on these components here on these tins pins it can it can just cause you problems down the line so one wash your hands real good before you start and two just try to keep your hands off of the uh, keep your filthy mitts off of the off of the terminals so you can see here the difference between the 2.4 gigahertz card and the dual band card you'll see you got those three extra pins on the uh, end there so that's really the the big difference between it. Also, here are those 
two um, antenna wire uh, slots that go on there. Now, this is, I highly recommend that you um, put your antenna wires on before you start. So, first of all, this, you'll see it has a, if you can see, has a number one on it. That is your number one terminal. On this, it has a number one and a number two. So we're actually going to use, and you'll see why here in a minute, um, we're actually going to use our existing antenna wire for our number one antenna. And these can be a little tricky getting on the new card. And you'll hear, you'll, you'll actually feel it pop on there whenever you get it on there. But I would definitely put these antenna wires on before you install that card. I mean, this, this card's pretty resilient, but if you see, there's 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 nothing underneath. Once that card is screwed down, which is where it's screwed down right here, there is nothing underneath it here for you to be pushing down with your fingers. And I've seen in some videos where people are just pushing down on this thing. And like I said, they're pretty resilient, but... You know, you push down too hard, break that card, break part of the circuit in there, even you weaken it, it can cause you problems down the line, or you break it, you've just wasted a $40 card. So we're going to do that, and then, since we're using the existing card on that, or the existing antenna wire, see this is what these antenna wires these two are actually connected by a little bridge here. We're going to pull that apart. But you can see these these here. This is actually a, a, a double side tape, so we can tape that to our the hood on our uh, laptop later. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can pull those apart. All right. So I have taken apart the two wires, but Hopefully you can see this here. I guess my hand here. See on that lower wire how it looks like the insulation is actually stripped back? It is. The where the tape was for those two to be connected. I don't know why that would be pulled apart. Um, so we're going to try this with just using the one wire uh, of the new kit and using the existing wire as the number one. And using the number two now I've gone ahead and taken that tape and uh, wrapped it back around this so that it at least covers that that exposed part of the wire on the antenna number one if you look at yours this antenna wire goes right through here underneath a little wad of wires and then it's underneath of right here and you'll see it goes into the side of this hinge here so we're going to use that same route for the new wires but we're, we're going to have to do something ahead of time here so we're going to go ahead and loosen those up, get those out from underneath of that. Keeper right there. Okay, there's one. And then you'll see right there, that is the antenna wire. We're going to pop out of that keeper, pull off to the side, and then that will gain us access up into the hinge. All right, so now we're going to turn it back over. We're going to open our computer back up. Now this has got a bezel that goes around the screen right here. Um, using those plastic tools again you can see that right here on the bottom on the line right there and there so let's start on one corner get that up underneath of there and then just kind of pry it apart and if you're gonna feel it pop apart you'll feel it snap and again you don't have to be super gentle don't manhandle it too much though. Right here at the bottom, you can't get up underneath of here right here. But as long as you're using this plastic one, just reach inside of there 
and then just kind of pry it kind of wiggle it back and forth and do that on both sides get your fingers back in there and you can pop the rest out with your fingers come on there we go now there is a piece of double-sided tape right along here to stick to your screen kind of keeps dirt and stuff from getting down into the bottom of this thing so just be careful whenever you're taking that off so that you're not messing up that double-sided tape and we're going to set that off to the side here and you'll see that there's two screws at each of these points that I pushed that I pointed out here two screws um, one of them holds the screen in and one of them is for this bracket that goes around the sides here that's a bracket uh, reinforcement and a wire keeper so we're first just going to take out the, the four screws for our screen. So our screen, once we get those four screws out, our screen, just be careful with it. And pull that screen out. And then just lay it right down here on your keyboard. Now you want to be extremely careful not to be putting anything on top of this. Don't lean on it. If you feel more comfortable, you can put a towel in between the keyboard and the screen to protect it. That will give it some cushion in case you uh, are a little clumsy and um, don't want to mess that thing up. Because that's going to be an even more expensive repair if you mess that up. That wire comes up behind this, behind all of this, and into here to go up to the side here. Okay. So I had to figure out how we were going to get in behind this bracket. Taking off that one single screw there does not release that bracket. There's actually two screws behind this hinge cover right here. So we're going to go ahead and um, take off the, and totally remove the screen so that we don't take a chance on breaking it or damaging it in any way. In some other models, you're able to feed that screw or feed that wire up and in, in behind here without taking this bracket off. But in this model, you cannot. So what we're going to do here, we'll use our little tools and carefully, because they've got a piece of tape right here. You want to get up underneath of that piece of tape. We don't want to damage it too much because we want that tape to put, go back in whenever we put this back together. Once you pull that tape up, take your tool right there and push that back to the back. All right. Now our screen is free to take off. We're going to set that off to the side. So now, see we're going to close it and flip it over. On this hinge here, there's actually three screws. One here, here, and here. And do those three. Now when you take this one off, this fan is going to want to come off and we're going to take that off and set it to the side too so we don't damage it. Okay, so now with, with that screw out alone, that fan's going to lift up. That straight out. And at this connector here, use one of your little plastic tools again. Just going to push that out. Very careful with this stuff. Ease it out. Okay. Now we're going to put that off to the side. That way it's not flopping around while we're trying to do what we're doing. Again, this here, that's our existing antenna wire. And now that's free from underneath of that hinge there. So now that can wires in that. So now we're going to flip it back over again. up and you're going to see the hinge is going to 
open up there. So now, take off this screw right here. I'm going to take off that black screw right here. And then, this here, I'm going to kind of pull it back out of the way. I want you to pull that apart. Lift it up over the top of this. Once you have that up there, this here will actually pull off to the side. Now you can see those two screws. Right there and there. Alright, so we're going to take those two screws off. Now, with that off, we've got the rest of the screws out. We need to pull one more screw off from up top here. This screw right here needs to come off. This here should pop right off of here. And it does. Congratulations. Well, to me, of course. Okay, so now we can go ahead and pull this out of there completely so we can feed our new wire in. So see, that's what that looks like. That's the whole screen bracket there. Okay, I'm gonna put that off to the side, and now we're gonna feed our new wire down into the motherboard. So, right here, if you can see, that right there is our existing antenna wire that wraps around the side here. Okay, so using your longer of the two wires, we're gonna feed just like where that one is. We're going to feed our antenna in, or I'm sorry, our uh, card end into the side here. And then I'm going to take this here. We've got some double sided tape here. I'm going to take off that piece. We're going to take off that piece. Now, Right up in here is where the, if they had a uh, dual channel um, uh, um, if they had a dual channel card in here, the antenna would actually go right here. You'll see a slot in here that has uh, one, two, three, four, five little grooves or uh, pieces that stick up. That's where the antenna wire would be going if this were a dual channel. So what we're going to do now that we've taken those two pieces of tape off, we're going to go ahead and put this in place. Alright, doesn't look like it's going to stick to it, but once we get our screen back in and everything and go to close that, put our bezel on there, it will hold that in place. Okay, as long as it's not sticking above that lip right here, that lip you see, as long as it's sitting down in that intent indentation and is below the the uh, fl below flush of the uh, board here, that will stay once we get our get our bezel back in. So, okay. Now it would be optimal if we could run that wire around and put it back behind this wire guard over here. But even these are the longest ones that I could find, and even this is not long enough to do that. Now. This is not the optimal way to do it, but it's going to have to work here, okay? So um, what we're going to have to do is run this across the front of the mother, or the, I'm sorry, the screen protector here. Now this has got a, a foil and then a carbon fiber on top to reduce any interference for our uh, um, uh, screen. So it should not affect this whatsoever as long as our antenna is up here where it's supposed to be. And, and the reason we want our antenna is up here on the top of that screen 
we want them as far away from the electronics of this computer so that we, we, we don't have any um, uh, interference, radio interference from our antenna, from our Wi-Fi into our computer. That's why we have these mounted up top here. But again, this should not bother or create any more uh, interference than, uh, than necessary. So now, I'm going to go back over here and feed this down into the side here to where it goes into that hole. And once it is in that hole, we can go ahead and put that hinge bracket back on there. Make sure you get those get this get this part here underneath of those wires. Underneath all the wires, including the screen wire. Alright, come on. sure that that old or the original um, antenna wire is up underneath of there. You see now that wire goes back in behind that bracket and and once that bracket off you'll see how those wires kind of feed in between these screws and that and that placeholder right there and it goes above and and in between those screws and whatnot so um, I've got it in between there I've got the the screws back in but I don't have them tightened I just want to show you with with the screws in place with that bracket in place and without them being tightened down that wire should move freely behind there Okay, so with, with us holding this in place where it goes, hold that wire flat there. We want just a little bit of slack so we're not breaking that, breaking that solder. Just a little bit of slack. So say you got that much in there. Just hold that, hold that down in place and then just slightly, I'll grab the right wire, and then just slightly pull that slack out to where there's just a little bit of slack in there. You don't want it. You don't want it real tight. Just pull just that, just that slack out of there. Okay, so that that'll still stay in place without binding up that that wire there. You don't want that right right down. You want a nice little loop in there so it's not it's not pulling on that solder joint because that is that is not you know real strong. So now that we've gotten that done, we're going to go ahead and tighten down those three screws and that will hold all those wires in place. Again, just snug it so you don't strip out those heads. We also want to get that top screw back in. get our cover back in place make sure our wires are fed through there good there it is. all right see that wire is just sticking up just a little bit where this bracket part of the bracket here goes so I'll push that down so that it's out of the way and uh right about where that screen one is Make sure that fits back underneath there the way it's supposed to. Okay, looks like a good fit. 
So we're going to go ahead and put our screen back on and get this bezel back on. So lay your screen back on top of your keyboard just like it was when we took it off. And then take all our tape back. back into its slot, nice and snug, and let's get that tape back down on there. Our bezel, our bezel back on, make sure to fit that down and behind the hinges like it was. It is easier to get this back on at the bottom before you put that hinge back together there. Just go all the way around it, I snap that back into place. Oh, and make sure that that antenna, if you can see it, see this thing's pretty flexible. So make sure that antenna is, is pulled up into place before you put this bezel back on. You'll hear it pop into place all the way across there. Now you can start to close it and make sure that it's all snapped into place. Then go back down here to the bottom. Make sure that the bottom is all snapped back into place. Alright, with that done, I'm going to go ahead and close the laptop, hold that hinge over you know, Hold that hinge over here because that's going to cause you a problem. Yeah. Alright, let's go ahead, hold on, I'm going to go ahead and put this hinge on with the door open. We want to make sure that our charging port, that's our charging port right here, where, where we plug our plug in we want to make sure that that's hasn't fallen out of place like mine did get that back into place and then we're going to push that back into place the hinge make sure our screw holes line up we're going to get that screwed back in now So there's these two screws here. Again, don't tighten them down until we get everything back in place. We gotta put the fan back in. So our fan here. We'll plug our fan back in. Once you have the right side up, it slips right in. Okay. Make sure we're not putting those wires up underneath of there. Make sure they're on top. We'll just push them down into place once we get it there. And put our screw back in on the side of the fan right here. And then one more screw. Alright, all three of those are in place. Tighten those down. Alright, so let's get our, our wires fed. First we're going to take our antenna wires. And we're going to get that 
other wire here back in place. Everything's routed back where we want it. So, all right. So we want to make sure we got number one here. We got number two here. Put your your antenna leads on before you connect your card to the board. And I'm gonna tell you, I, I fiddled around with these for a little while with the uh, new antenna outside the box before I ever started messing with this and I had one hell of a time getting these antenna wires to go into place be patient and I got really lucky evidently for the sake of the video I got really lucky so since this one wire is just a little bit too long we're just gonna we're just gonna wind that around in a little loop all right we got our antenna wires on going to Again, putting that in at about a 22 degree angle. Shouldn't be any force to it at all. It should slide right in. See how easy that is? Okay. And then we push down and make sure that's in place. Now if it's crooked, let it go back up, put it back into place, and then push it back down. Do not try dicking around with it whenever it's laying down in there flat. Hold that down into place. Get your screw on there. So we just had the one screw, we can go ahead and snug that down. Now, the, the little bitty Phillips head I have that's magnetic is great for putting your, your screws into place and starting them but if, if you really need to use that uh, number zero Phillips head to uh, actually untight you know uh, loosen them up and and get them back into place alright so we've got our wires all into place we don't want that wire sticking up damn it alright so I just caused that to pop off of there. Let's see if we can get it back on without... Let's do what I told you not to do. Alright, it's back on there. I hold that in place and just kind of flatten out that wire. So it's not in our way and not going to get crimped whenever we go to put the bottom case back on. The last thing you want is vibration, rubbing up against that fan metal or something and stripping into that wire, causing interference. Alright, so our wires are all in place. I think we're ready to put the bottom back on. it back into place there we go all right so just go around now from one corner make sure that it's all seated in place snapped into where it's supposed to be and all the way back to the back corners here Okay, let's go ahead and close it, flip it over, and then get our screws back into place here. All 
All right, battery. We'll make sure you lock that back into place. Got our power cord back in. Put our dongle. Put our dongle back into place. Okay, let's open it up and cross our fingers. Alright, so we're fired back up. And let's go ahead and check our well, first of all, we've got over here. It did recognize our 5 gigahertz and our 2.4 gigahertz. I already signed into my 5 gig. And um, it recognized it. I got no notifications or any errors whenever it, it popped up. So it did automatically connect to the new Wi Fi card, the new network card. <clears throat> and uh, we'll see how the drivers are now. Go back to our device manager, go down to our network. And yes, we got our Intel dual band wireless and our Bluetooth devices. Uh, it does not say Intel, but it is different from what we had in here before. So let's look here, our driver info. So it did update to the Intel 2018 or the uh, for the network card, the Bluetooth. Let's go driver. Not saying Microsoft 2006 there. Okay, according to this, it did actually change. Um, it did automatically update that with the new drivers there. Let's see if this one's the same. And same here. Looks like it deleted the old device, started the new one, configured it, everything all on its own. Now, if for some reason that yours doesn't, just go back to our driver folder here. And if you click on that driver, it will install it where you need to go. All right, well, I finished this up. Uh, I really hope that I didn't bore you guys to death. I hope this has helped somebody out and uh, that you have found your way to this video when I couldn't find anything else. And uh, please do leave a like and share it if possible. Uh, I know it's not, probably not something you'd normally share, but um, any help you can give to get this out there, I'd appreciate it, and I'm sure somebody else will too. So thank you very much, guys, and I will see you later.